Today's story is about a man who having loved his teacher for over 14 years, kidnapped her. Mary Schaffer graduated from high school in Minnesota and entered Bethel University in 1962. While she was in college, she met Irv and they became a couple during her sophomore year. Shortly after she graduated, they got married. Afterward, her husband pursued a master's program at the school, and Mary became a teacher at Alexander Ramsey High School. At that time, Min Sen Shiu was a student at Alexander Ramsey High School, and fell in love with Mary when he saw her as his teacher. Shiu was born in Taiwan, and his father was a professor at the University of Minnesota. When he was eight years old, he moved to Minnesota with his mother and two younger brothers. They were finally reunited, and his father purchased a small house. However, shortly after, Shiyu's father passed away after three years of being reunited with his wife and children. During his youth, Shiyu was reportedly engaged in criminal activities, such as starting fires in apartments of strangers. His ruthless behavior made his family fear him, and his mother said he lacked emotions. Despite these troubles, Shiyu excelled academically in Alexander Ramsey High School, and participated in the school's rugby and wrestling teams, earning recognition as a promising student. In high school, Shiyu came to have a crush on his math teacher, Mary. It was a natural thing for a teenage boy with raging hormones to be infatuated with a beautiful teacher. His mind was filled with love for her, and he even wrote about his feelings in a diary. As time went on, Shiyu began sexually fantasizing about his teacher. He later wrote stories about his fantasies with fictional characters from movies and about Mary, which included consensual sex and rape. Eventually, he was not satisfied with his fantasies, so he decided to kidnap Mary. However, at that time, Mary and her husband were living with their children in the Philippines as missionaries. In 1971, her husband became a pastor, and they had children named Elizabeth and Steve. After Mary left for the Philippines, Shiyu graduated from high school and pursued a major in electrical engineering at the University of Minnesota. However, he decided to drop out of school to pursue money-making opportunities. He set up a sound equipment store near the University of Minnesota. While working at the store, he encountered a robbery and ended up in a fight with the robber, who lost his life during the altercation. He was acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. In 1973, Shiyu's mother remarried and moved with her youngest son to the state of Washington. Shiyu lived with his younger brother. After his younger brother graduated from college, he got a job, and became independent. Since then, Shiyu has lived alone. He never stopped thinking about Mary and continued searching for her. In 1975, Shiyu went to Mary's in-law's house and threatened her in-laws he would kill them if they reported him. He thought Mary lived there but learned that Mary and Irv were in the Philippines. Mary's in-laws did not report Shiyu to the police. In 1979, Mary and her husband moved from the Philippines to Minnesota. Mary's mother-in-law told Mary and Irv that Shiyu had threatened Irv's parents when their son and daughter-in-law returned home. However, since the incident had happened several years ago, Mary and her husband could not identify the intruder, so they didn't pay much attention to it. They were planning to return to the Philippines in 1980, so they weren't concerned. Around this time, upon hearing about Mary's return, Shiyu began stalking her. He spent hours hiding in the woods near her house. However, as Mary and her husband were busy preparing for their return to the Philippines and meeting friends, they didn't notice Shiyu's actions. However, one day, her husband found sawdust on the floor of the house but didn't pay much attention to a hole under the bed. Later, it was discovered that the hole was dug by Shiyu as part of his plan to kidnap Mary. By May 16, 1980, there were only a few days left, until Mary and her husband returned to the Philippines. On that day, Mary sent her six-year-old son Steve to kindergarten in the morning. Later, Mary and her daughter Elizabeth went to a hair salon to get their hair cut. Around 4.30 p.m., they left the salon and were walking to the parking lot. When Mary was opening the car door, an Asian man approached them. He wore thick glasses and looked like a well-groomed man in his mid-thirties. Mary thought he might be a tourist and asked if he needed any help. The man was Shiu, and he pointed a gun at Mary. He forced Mary and Elizabeth into Mary's car and ordered them to head north. He threatened to shoot Mary if she didn't follow his instructions. Upon arriving at a secluded forest, 
he tied up Mary and Elizabeth and put them in the trunk of the car. He then drove to a parking lot and attempted to switch to his car. However, when Xiu approached his car, two boys looked at him. One of the boys, Jason, approached him and greeted him. He was afraid of being recognized by Jason, so eventually, after kidnapping Jason as well, Xiu left the area. The other boy got scared and ran to Jason's mother, who tried to find Jason, but the car had already disappeared. Jason's mother immediately reported it to the police. Xiu drove his car into the woods. Mary tried to calm Jason and kept talking to him, but he was too frightened to respond with anything other than his name and age. Xiu took Jason further into the woods and eventually killed him. He told Mary and Elizabeth that he let Jason go. Then, he drove back home and put Mary and Elizabeth in a small closet, locking it. Until that point, Mary didn't recognize who he was. He brought her out of the closet and started talking about himself. He claimed that because Mary gave him a B in math, he couldn't receive a scholarship and couldn't attend college. As a result, he was drafted into the military, fought in the Vietnam War, and was taken as a prisoner. He said all his failures in life were because of Mary. Mary finally realized that he was her former student. However, his words were all lies. He had received scholarships, attended college, and never went to Vietnam. Xiu blamed everything on Mary and said that all he wanted was revenge. Mary asked him how he planned to take revenge, and he raped her and recorded it on video. Meanwhile, Mary's husband was worried as his wife and daughter hadn't returned. He searched nearby hospitals, thinking they might have been in an accident, but they were nowhere to be found. He finally reported it to the police around midnight. At that time, the police were investigating Jason's case, but they only asked Mary's husband a few formal questions and dismissed it as a simple husband and wife's dispute. They didn't take his report seriously. On May 18, 1980, the police were searching for the area where Jason was kidnapped and found a license plate that had fallen off Mary's car. The police considered Mary's husband a prime suspect and began investigating him. The other boy who was with Jason stated that the kidnapper was similar in looks to Mary's husband, but he passed a lie detector test and had an alibi, so all suspicions were cleared. During this period, Xiu went to work at his store as usual and returned home every night. Mary begged him to release Elizabeth, but he didn't do it. He kept Mary locked in the closet when he went to work and kept Elizabeth in a box and he put the box inside his car. Xiu was confident that Elizabeth wouldn't escape because he told her that if she did, she would never see her mother again. Afterward, Xiu wrote two letters to Mary's husband. The first letter suggested that Mary hadn't disappeared and had run away on her own, advising him to inform the police accordingly. The second letter demanded that the police immediately stop investigating the case. Both letters were sent to the FBI for analysis. Perhaps due to his overconfidence that he could never be found, or maybe because he was convinced that Mary and Elizabeth wouldn't escape, Xiu's control over them began to loosen at some point. He allowed Mary and Elizabeth to have meals in the kitchen and gave them permission to shower every 10 days. Xiu permitted Elizabeth to watch TV and even bought board games for her. A month after the kidnapping, he took Mary and Elizabeth to a job fair held in Chicago. Surprisingly, he rented a camping car and traveled to Chicago with them. As they hadn't changed their clothes since the abduction, Xiu took them to a shopping mall to buy them new clothes. Due to Xiu's strict control at the mall, Mary couldn't seek help. As time went on, Xiu became bolder. On July 4, Xiu had dinner with Mary and Elizabeth and later went to the University of Minnesota to watch fireworks with them. Although Mary saw at least three police cars that day, she couldn't dare to ask for help because Xiu was pointing a gun at her. During their captivity, Mary read the Bible to Elizabeth every day. Despite missing several chances, they didn't lose hope and faith. On July 7th in the morning, Xiu told Mary that he sold his house and bought a camping car to travel across the United States with them. Mary thought that leaving this place would make it even less likely for them to be found, and realized it was their last opportunity. At that time, Xiu didn't allow Mary and Elizabeth to separate he tied them together and locked them in a room before going to work. Mary used a hidden hairpin to open the door, and they went upstairs while still tied together. There, Mary made a call to the police. 
She trembled as she told them that she and her daughter had been kidnapped and asked them to come quickly. The police asked if Jason was with them, and Mary realized that Jason hadn't made it home. After reporting to the police, they left the house and hid behind a car. A few minutes later, the police arrived, and they were free after two months of captivity. Meanwhile, the police found Shiyu's store and arrested him immediately. He was initially transferred to Ramsey County Jail. There, he got to know a fellow inmate named Richard, who was soon to be released. He asked Richard to get rid of Mary and Elizabeth, promising to pay him $50,000 in return. However, Richard informed the police about this plan. In 1980, Shiu was put on trial for the charges of kidnapping and rape. As soon as Mary testified, Shiu suddenly jumped from his chair and tried to attack her, but fortunately, the prosecutor restrained him. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. His second charge was related to Jason's case. Jason's parents had to endure unimaginable pain during the five months he was missing. Since Jason's body was not found, the prosecution couldn't charge him with murder. Eventually, the prosecution agreed not to charge Shiyu with first-degree murder if he revealed the location of Jason's body. 166 days after Jason's disappearance, his body was found. During Jason's trial, Mary had to testify again. While Mary was testifying, Shiyu suddenly jumped over the table and attacked her with a sharp weapon. Mary was quickly taken to the hospital and required 62 stitches. Shiyu's defense attorney claimed that he had mental issues, but psychological evaluations of him showed no signs of mental illness. In this trial, he was sentenced to 40 years for second-degree murder, adding to the 30-year sentence, totaling 70 years in prison. On July 6, 2010, Shiyu was eligible for parole, but the judge denied his parole, stating that he still posed a threat to society. In 2016, he applied for parole again but was rejected once more. In 1981, after recovering from her injuries, Mary returned to the Philippines with her family to pursue her interrupted dreams and sense of purpose. After her and her husband's retirement in the Philippines, they returned to the United States. 